And Joe, can you touch on that? Like, can you give us a little mini Coles Notes version of what the step code is, just to refresh our listeners, and what step that people basic do basic meet to, or yeah. or get to for their basic needs? Yeah, for sure. So the BC Energy Step Code. This is something that's been brewing in the province for for many many years. It was sort of a soft rollout two years ago, and some advanced municipalities started using it right away. What it is and how it was designed was a uh, step one, two, three, four, five to implement into British Columbia to lower operational energy usage and intensity of, of homes in the province. Now, the way it was designed was great, where step one was just intended for you to have to do a blower door test. And so this can start building capacity and knowledge. And then step two was, you know, a blower door test plus an energy model meeting a certain uh, mark. I've never even heard of a step two project being delivered actually, or a step one. Um, and so most municipalities were kind of already there. There was these climate emergencies being declared and a number of groups started reacting to say, oh, step code, great, this will solve it. And, and, and you know, we can debate this, this part, um, but I think it was a good move. And so a lot of them went right to step three. They said step three is now, now mandatory um, and I think step three is a great place um, to, to, to be at um, and I think we can kind of debate between step three and step five and passive house and net zero if there might be sort of a sweet spot in between there um, from a from an economics or from an environmental or from a from a comfort and occupant standard right I think there's there's lots to learn here still um, so hopefully I covered that off but you uh, did and you guys kind of kind of touched on two things there is Allison like you said that um, you don't need to worry so much when you're building a passive house because you're already at step five. And then like to Joe, your point is that it's great to kind of have like the step code program, but it's like if you're starting to force everyone to do three, are people doing it for the right reasons? Or are they doing it because they have to do it? And what could that create down the road? I'm a big supporter of legislation being the direction to sustainability because I think we've seen it um, I can't even remember what code it was where we started to require exterior insulation in the city of Vancouver and all the builders, the spec builders were pushing back and saying, we can never do this. And now that's just every house that goes up in the city of Vancouver has exterior insulation. We also practice on Vancouver Island where that is not the code mm. and trying to even just do a standard home with exterior insulation is requires bringing in uh, more often specialty siding contractors because they don't know how to deal with it. So mm. I think that's a really good indication of, you know, that bringing forward those sustainable measures forces people to be, um, forces the market transformation, uh, the training, the trades, the material availability. That's how these things become more accessible for everybody. So we don't want it to be so much that it uh, causes some sort of a sticker shock where there's a real pushback on the finances. But these steps, I think the only way that they'll happen, because as we said, 10% of the people are doing a doing the best job that's that can be done. The people are making the right choices, building long, durable, sustainable homes. But if 90% of the industry is going to be building a house with a 15 year shelf life out of spray foam insulation, what's the point? So we've got, everybody's got to get pushed and that's how that will happen. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a very steep learning curve for the industry <laughs> as we go through this though. Yeah. I, and if I can add to that, like I, I totally agree, totally support like a legislative route to this is good. I think that the, to, to the the we kind of screwed up right you know our our, our, our forefathers uh, um, kind of screwed up a little bit and we kind of forgot a little bit about sustainability for a good chunk of good chunk of time in this country this this world and so and we're now reacting to that as a society and so I, I think the intensity in which something like this um, was designed was correct like it was going to be 10 years and it just comes down to capacity of the industry right so you know, go back even five years or go back 10 years when we were doing blower door tests, there was a handful of people in the entire province or even the country that could offer these services. So this is a new industry inside of a building. And so now to Allison's point on the exterior insulation, it changes the way we've always built. And and so uh, we now need more mechanical designers. We need more energy advisors. We need to train mechanical contractors to CSAF 280. We need to train exterior envelope or framers or some carpenter groups to understand like framing structure, air tightness, insulation, because it's all become integrated. And so, so it's happened fast. And I, you know, there's some risks out there for sure because 
you know, people need consulting to learn how to do that. And if there isn't a consultant that's got any time to be able to consult to them, then they're going to have to go figure out. This is industry-wide, the building inspectors, the architects, the city, the the builders, uh, the trades. And so so it's 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 a it's a wild time right now in, in, in the province, I would say, where everyone's scrambling to figure it out. Um, and there's no proven path in which a performance-based path versus prescriptive, right? The old code would say, build a two-by-six wall and put an R22 bat in the wall. And that was prescribing how to build, where now performance-based options allows you step code. You could build a two-by-four wall with an R14 insulation, potentially, even in a passive house, potentially, and 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 have another wall over there that compensates for that um, and play with a performance-based modeling, which we found advantageous to try and find the right formula. But the thing is, is the builders are saying, hey, you know, we'll do it, but how do we do it? And there's no an there's no answer to it. It's starting to develop. So what's the assembly we should use? Well, here's 150 different options and pick the one that best for you. And they're like, well, I have no idea. Like, just tell me what to do. And so I think we've been fighting that a little bit as an industry. Capacity is coming. Um, BC Housing has been doing great education. CHBA has been doing great out education. Passive House Canada has been doing great. Uh, BCIT has been doing great stuff. So it's all there. It, it, it's coming. It's happening. I have less concerns today than than I did 18 months ago when this was, I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be wild. But we're also regional here and, and, and Vancouver has been ahead of this. The municipalities in North Shore and West Fan have been ahead of this. Uh, but you go, you know, we're in bubbles. You go to Northern BC, you go to probably Vancouver Island in some context, although we've got great, great people over there kind of pushing the, pushing the, 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 the legislation, but um, it's different. And so you, we're in our little bubble. So some people have never done this. They've never built a uh, step code home and they have to learn. Um, and, and others that have been in certain regions, it's business as usual. Um, and then the rest of Canada, well, that's a whole another story. And so the implementation of tier code nationwide will be, is coming. Um, and we'll see if that, if, if carbon catches that and if there's some tweaks to that. But uh, we have to build, long story short, there's risk. We have to build capacity. We don't want another leaky condo crisis on our hands here. <laughs>